not dead, it's just resting. I'm Reba McIntyre, and in this daytime to remember, we're going to return to 1980, a time when disco was king. In New York City, folks were strapping on those clunky platform shoes and dancing the night away at Studio 54. And a few hundred miles upstate in the fictional town of Port Charles, everybody was doing the hustle at the campus disco, run by none other than Lucas Lorenzo Spencer. One person who wouldn't be caught dead doing the full tilt boogie was General Hospital's Tracy Quartermain. Yesterday, we saw Tracy in her penthouse, standing perfectly still, watching her daddy die from a heart attack. She wouldn't move a muscle. Not until Edward promised her he wouldn't cut her out of his will. <laughs> That's cold, isn't it? Well, Tracy was more than just cold. She was an Arctic blast. Her marriage to Senator Mitch Williams was just as chilly. In fact, Mitch was having a hot affair behind Tracy's back with Susan Moore. Before we see Mitch and Susan and Moore of Tracy had her most dastardly, let's check in at the campus disco where Leslie Weber is getting funky. <laughs> for the first time tonight. I mean, before she was always either Dr. Weber or Law Boggle's mother. I, I have a feeling that I know uh, how and why the two of you became such good friends so suddenly. You do? Mm -hmm. Do you really think that you can fool someone who works like I talk with you every day? Diana, I haven't had the vaguest idea of what you're talking about. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, will you take a look at that woman? She is doing the best job of pretending that this going with Joe Kelly is her idea of heaven. Joe Kelly is a terrific guy. Now, why shouldn't she enjoy dancing with him? Because I think that there are a thousand other places that she'd like to be tonight. Except that you and she are here for the same reason. To kind of help me unwind after the whole kind of ordeal with Jeremy Hewitt. You know something? I really love you both for doing it. <laughs> and for trying to con me into making me feel like... This is your idea of a good time. Oh, Diana, we thought we were being so shrewd. Oh. <laughs> now they're coming back, so don't wait on them. Okay, the whole All right. Okay, okay. okay. I'm I got you there. <laughs> Daddy, I did what you told me to. I went next door and well, I got your medication for you. Oh, Tracy. I died. I, I don't want to die, please. You better take your pills, Daddy.
Again, okay? Daddy, let's, let's not play any tricks like that on each other ever again. Is that what we were doing, Tracy? Well, you bet. You were trying to get me to think you were really having a heart attack, and I was trying to get you to think that I was going to let you die. You were very convincing. You know, you weren't, not for a minute. I knew you were shaking now. I want you to call Zelda back and tell her not to come, okay, Daddy? Don't call me that. I am not your father. Tonight, I'm going to sign the new will. No, you won't, Daddy. Watch me. I'm signing it here. Tonight, you'll be disinherited. You can't do me, Daddy. Do that to me, Daddy. You love me. You'll break my heart if you do. You haven't got a heart, Tracy. Daddy, you know how much I love you. And now you're just being cruel to me. When I was lying on the floor there and you came over to me, were those genuine tears? You know they were, Daddy. They were tears of love. You can't do this to your little girl. Why did you leave me lying on the floor and go to the telephone? If you knew I was faking, why would I need an ambulance? <gasps> Daddy, come on. No more tricks. I love you. Don't touch me. You know, Tracy, your touch seconds me. Oh. That's better. No more tricks from you either. Tracy, I want you to go upstairs to your room and stay there until I call for you. And Tracy, I suggest you do a little praying now that I've disowned you. Pray that Mitch didn't marry you for your money. Pray that Mitch really does love you and will allow you to remain Mrs. Mitch Williams. Oh, I knew this was a mistake, Mitch. Huh? I came here because I wanted to talk, because I'm tired of trying to talk in, at the rib when I'm supposed to be working. Okay, well, we, we don't have to have a serious talk right now. You promised me if I came over here, we could talk about your divorce from Tracy. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm going to have a talk with Tracy. I'm going to tell her the whole truth. What truth? Yours, hers, or mine? No, I'm going to tell her that I, was, I married her because I was in love with money, and all of a sudden I realized I don't love money anymore. Well, that ought to be a good laugh for her, and I wouldn't blame her. No, I'm going to tell her that I, 
I don't need her to get to the governor's mansion. Oh, well, now there's some high-class, impossible dreaming. And if I don't make it to the governor's mansion, I'll just say, it wasn't meant to be. Cop out. Come on, you call it what you like. This is what I'm willing to do for you. I'd really like to believe that, Mitch. Okay. May I never kiss you again if what I say isn't true. Am I entitled to one more question? Anything. What happens if you don't get to the governor's mansion? Well, I don't think I'd make such a bad country lawyer. You? Hmm? Country lawyer sort of coming back to his, his wife and five kids. <laughs> oh, what wife is that? Uh, I don't know. I'm not so sure about five kids. Yeah. Well, go for six. Oh, it was nice to sit down for a minute. Yeah, they've kept you busy tonight, huh? They oh, certainly have. I can't wait for the disco to close so that I can go home and be with Scotty. Have you enjoyed yourself tonight? Oh, I certainly have. I I got out and, and discoed and I feel ten years younger. Well, two and a half years younger. <laughs> Luke has been absolutely dear. He's really nice. Yeah, he is. He served his pizza himself. He was the first one to ask me to dance. He asked me to dance several times. And before I knew it, boy, I was right in the mood there. You've just described why Luke is so successful. Yes, I suppose. Uh, it's because of Luke that single women feel that they can come in here and just have fun without some drunk trying to come on to them all night long. You know what I mean? I admit, I, I may have exaggerated just a little bit the fun I was having. I suspect that all four of us at this table, Diana and Bobby and me and Joe, that we were all trying just a little bit too hard to have fun. Does that answer the question that you had? Uh, that wasn't exactly what I was thinking. But, uh, I do have a question. May I ask it? This one, do you need permission to ask me a question? Well, I've never asked you this kind of question. Goodness, ask. Don't keep me in suspense. Have you ever felt attracted to another man while you were married? Kind of a hard question to answer with just a yes or no. Kind of a hard one to ask. Uh, yeah, um, once I was married to Rick, I think I was just so much in love with him, I couldn't find him anywhere But when I was married before, I think that situation was so different that, um, yeah, yeah, I think that there were occasions when I thought somebody else was a very attractive fella. Does that answer your question? Excuse me, Dr. Weber. Yes. May I have Hi. the pleasure of one more dance? Oh, you're not serious. Yes. yes. I've given my approval, so you're stuck with him. Oh, well, in that case, so um, sure, absolutely. Great. Well, well, I may have permission to dance with your mother. <laughs> my mother doesn't need my permission. Oh. I thought maybe I did. You absolutely don't. Ha <laughs> ha, good. Looks like Leslie finally got to do the hustle. Or was that the funky chicken? Either way, Laura wasn't at all happy to see her doing it with Luke. The vision of her mother dancing with the man she secretly loved was too much for the teenage Laura to bear. And to make matters worse, Laura was jealous of Jennifer Smith, who was just weeks away from becoming Luke's wife. And at the penthouse, it looks like Tracy is finally going to get what she deserves because Daddy is prepared to do what she dreads sign on the dotted line. Across town, Dr. Jeff Weber has taken advantage of the fact that his roommate Joe Kelly is out on the town. Jeff's spending the evening in the more serious surroundings with nurse Annie Logan, Port Charles's resident virgin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, 
I don't think it was a very good idea for me to come over and... I and think it was it. a terrific idea. Ah, uh, no. no. And the dessert was the best. Sit yeah. down. No, I, I think we better talk. Uh-uh. Yes. Uh-uh. Yes. Yeah. Look, Annie, look. Before things get totally out of control, I promise, we'll stop. I know. I, I trust you, Jeff, and I, I think I trust myself. Well, then? Well, it's Joe. I beg your pardon? Joe, when's he coming home? I don't know. Why? Well, if he came home and he was still here, I'd really feel awkward. Annie, you won't be here when Joe gets home, believe me. This is one of his nights out on the town. And chances are you'll be at home in your own bed long before Joe rolls in, so don't worry, okay? Come well, here. no, Jeff. It's just... you got to admit, he's not been the same lately. It's, and I'm worried about him. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. It hasn't been too easy living with him here lately. Well, you are a constant reminder that he's lost me. Yeah, it's true. You know, one day he wants to deck me, and just move on out of here, and the next he, he's telling me how much he knows that our love was meant to be and just giving us every blessing in the world. Poor Joe. Doesn't know where he's at. Or who he's with. Maybe that's his problem right now. Edward, you're first. Howard, would you do the first witness signature, please? Well, that's it. Yes, indeed. This will is now in effect. Well, isn't somebody going to sing the Star Spangled Banner or I'll fire off a 21 gun salute? Hmm? Howard, how about you? No? Very well, then. Perhaps I should take the stage again and tell the three of you what's going to happen now that I'm several million slimmer. I'm not interested, Tracy. Zelda, Howard, let's go next door to my apartment. The judge is going to come to the conclusion that the only thing fair for my son, Ned, is a paternity test on Alan Jr., and you know who's going to have the last laugh when Alan Jr. turns out not to be Alan Sr.'s son? I am, Daddy. So what you're doing here doesn't matter a bit. Because I'm going to have everything I want out of life. Good night. your wife. Probably is. Hey, I never told you. Tracy not only knows about this apartment, she's been here. She's seen it. Hello, Tracy. Oh, Mitch. I'm so glad you decided to answer the phone. I was busy. What do you want? I want you home. All right. I'm on my way. There's a small matter I want to discuss with you. I just want I want a divorce. Every A double whammy for Tracy. Done him by her daddy and dumped by her husband. Actually, Mitch changed his mind. He didn't divorce Tracy after all. That's because Edward paid him to stay married to Tracy and get her out of Port Charles. So Tracy didn't get divorced and Luke didn't get married. Instead of tying the knot with Jennifer the mob princess, Luke went on the run with Laura. We'll see their adventures later this week. But first, 
Tune in tomorrow because Alan Quartermain's on a rampage. His wife Monica's been having an affair with Rick Weber, and Alan doesn't want revenge. He wants them both dead. This is one you won't want to miss. So, see you tomorrow. This is Joan London. And Charles Gibson. Tomorrow, the wrong diagnosis can end in unnecessary surgery. It did for one woman at one of America's most prestigious hospitals. Misdiagnosis, it could happen to you on tomorrow's Good Morning America. Will Haley become Tanner's victim again? Watch what happens on All My Children today.